OnePlus's first tablet is here and it's unsurprisingly called the OnePlus Pad. One look at the specs and I feel it has the DNA of the OG OnePlus One. You know, I would actually tag this the flagship killer tablet. Well, if you're here for the very first time, I'm Ashad, you're watching Track and Tech English. Let me talk a little bit more in detail about OnePlus's first tablet. Should you buy it? Should you not buy it? We'll get into the details. The first thing that stuck me about the OnePlus Pad is that it is slim. It's only 6.7 millimeters thick and it doesn't weigh too much either. 552 grams, that's about it. Add to that, you've got this 2.5D curved design on the rear. I don't know what this 2.5D means, but whatever it is, it's curved, it's not flat. It's curved on the rear and it's also curved on the front, adding to the whole comfort factor of you holding it and using it in your hand. But one tiny thing that I noticed while using the pad is that the Type-C port at the bottom and the other ports, of course, there's no 3.5mm headphone jack, but that port is slightly angled because of that curve and then the outer part sort of digs into your palms when you're holding it horizontally while playing games or watching videos. While I did mention in passing that it doesn't have a 3.5mm headphone jack, it's not really a good thing. Honestly, all tablets should have a headphone jack. And the Type-C port is only USB Type-C 2.0 speed, which is a bit of a letdown considering this is a performance-oriented tablet. Now, the pad itself is constructed of, of course, metal. Metal is what most tablets use in this price category. And there is this plastic ring around around the you know rear which is basically the antenna for the wi-fi signals and no this pad doesn't have 5g support there's no sim card support either which is again a bit of a letdown considering that it is priced under rupees 40,000. always on 5g for a tablet is definitely helpful talking about wi-fi you get support for wi-fi 6 and you also get support for bluetooth 5.3 which is a good thing and you know what i've been using the tablet and the wi-fi 6 connectivity i have a wi-fi 6 connection back home it's extremely stable extremely strong if you like the kind of incisive detailed reviews that we make, don't forget to give us your support and hit the subscribe button. Now coming back to the design, no pun intended here because I'm going to talk about the back of the tablet. The rear camera has been placed in the horizontal orientation. It's an interesting placement, but it is the right kind of placement if you ask me, because then your pictures will be properly centered. But then again, that circular camera ring that you have is too big for one single camera that exists inside it. Also, when you talk about the cameras on the OnePlus Pad, you've got a 16 MP camera on the rear and the 8 MP camera on the front. And if you look at it, the quality of the cameras are pretty average. You can shoot 4K video from the rear camera in 30 FPS, but you can also shoot videos in wide angle with the front camera. And the wide angle exists for a reason because there's this limelight feature with which when you actually move around, the camera also tracks focus of you. What I'll do is I'll just add a few samples of the pictures that we've taken from the OnePlus Pad and you guys can go and check it out over there. Also, the power button is on the top and then you have those two volume buttons right next to it on the right edge on the top as well. Again, this is very similar to the kind of placement that you get with iPads as well, but the power button on the top doesn't have an embedded fingerprint scanner. That, my friends, is the biggest miss on this tablet because then you will have to make use of a pattern unlock or you will have to use a face unlock, which is, of course, far less reliable. Now, remember how green is the in color for consumer electronics this year? That's also true for the OnePlus Pad. The other thing I need to mention is of course, there's no IP rating. Overall, the design feels sturdy enough. There are absolutely no creaks and it feels minimal and aesthetic. It's a good first attempt by OnePlus for a tablet. Now talking about the green color, even the OnePlus magnetic keyboard accessory that you can buy separately has a green color and that color matched look is damn nice. Now there are two accessories that OnePlus sells. One is the stylo and of course the keyboard. The stylo is priced at 5,000 and the keyboard is 8,000 pretty pricey, I would say. And when you attach the keyboard to the tablet, it adds a lot of weight, so you have to be prepared for that. It latches on magnetically like this, and once it's latched, it makes this sound as well. But this is the only angle and the only position that you get. Having said that, the keys are spaced very nicely, and it's got really nice travel too. I wrote the entire script on the pad, so I know that typing is a lot of fun. But the up and down arrows are really tiny, so, you know, big hands tiny keys, very difficult. Also what's tiny is the trackpad and that's particularly cumbersome to use, especially when you want to use the gestures for you know swiping between apps, which is of course available within the pad itself. Talking about the stylus, you can magnetically latch it onto the tablet like you would with an iPad and an Apple Pencil. And of course it also charges it. The stylus has 4096 pressure points. I used it, it doesn't have that pen to paper feel that you generally get with an S Pen and a Samsung tablet or an Apple Pencil and an iPad. By the way, OnePlus also lets you 
take screen off notes. So even if the screen is switched off, you can write on it and it will immediately take notes. But there are not too many apps like Samsung's ecosystem where OnePlus bundles, uh, you know, something like a pen up. It's just one notes app that you can use for, you know, whatever you... Had to happen. Clumsy, I shot this clumsy. Man, that sound. By the way, OnePlus doesn't bundle too many apps. You can only use the Notes app with the stylus. You might have to download a few apps from the Play Store to make full use of it. So if you ask me, I would buy the tablet and the keyboard, despite the fact that it has a tiny trackpad and skip the stylus. Now let's talk about the display. The display has edge to edge glass and it's also 2.5D curved. And it has a 6.7 millimeter equidistant bezel running around the display. So it's very symmetrically nice to look at. And of course it gives you a screen to body ratio of 88.14%. Not the best, but still good nonetheless. All right, let's tackle the elephant in the room. This is an IPS LCD panel, yes. I know that a lot of folks wanted an AMOLED display on the OnePlus pad, but tell me one tablet under rupees 40,000 that gives you an AMOLED display. I'll wait. The nearest one that we could find at its currently discounted price of about 50,000 is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. So yeah, I wouldn't call IPS LCD in this price category a con. Now this tablet has a peak brightness of 500 nits and it also supports Dolby Vision. But when we were testing, Dolby Vision support is not available on Netflix and we asked OnePlus if an update is coming later for Netflix. So what OnePlus had to say is that yes, they have Dolby Vision rating from Dolby themselves, but Netflix has even more stringent measures and to be certified as a Netflix Dolby Vision ready tablet, which of course may or may not happen. Having said that, we did try out a Dolby Vision video that we downloaded from the internet and it played really fine and the HDR performance is good too. That about this display also has 144Hz refresh rate with variable refresh rate 3060, 90, 120, 144 depending on the content that's playing. It is a nice enough LCD. It's not the most color accurate and you will see a little bit of a color shift when you sort of, you know, look at it from angles. But generally that happens with big tablet displays. I also did try out HDR videos on YouTube. You can play back up to 2K HDR videos. Oh, I completely forgot. This is also a 2K panel. And the quality of YouTube HDR is pretty good. It's vibrant, it's rich, and you know, the dynamic range performance is also decent, but I still feel that color reproduction is not the best, even in that pure color mode. The other thing that you need to note about this display is that the oleophobic coating is not the best. So you will get a lot of smudges when you're using it because you're gonna be touching the panel a lot. And you also get smudges on the rear because again, that aluminum panel attracts a lot of smudges. All right, now I'll tell you why I felt that this has the OnePlus One DNA is because of the Dimensity 9000 chip that you get inside it. That makes it the most powerful tablet under rupees 40,000 period. Because the next best chip that you can get is the Snapdragon 860 with the Xiaomi Pad 5. Having a very powerful chip is one thing, but does it perform well? And that's a resounding yes from my side. The 3 d Mark Wildlife stress test that we ran, we've got very good stability scores. Even CPU throttle, it doesn't throttle that much. 88% CPU stability is very, very good. And apart from that, the thermal efficiency of this tablet is very good. It just doesn't get hot. And I did try PUBG New State and Call of Duty. PUBG New State runs at 90 FPS, Call of Duty at 120 FPS and I played three finger with Call of Duty and it is absolutely a blast. The refresh rate is good. The touch sampling rate is also pretty good. I mean, it responds to touches very well. It's a very good gaming tablet if you ask me. And if you're using the tablet for your documents or email, it just glides through most tasks. The app opening times are very good. It didn't break a sweat. Also because we're testing the 12 GB variant with 256 GB of storage, which is the LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. Now let's talk about the software experience of the tablet. And that is why most people buy iPads because it has a proper tablet-like OS running on it. On OnePlus, you get Oxygen OS 13.1 based on Android 13 and OnePlus also promises three years of software updates and four years of security updates. That's very good. But this feels mostly like bloated up version of Oxygen OS running on a OnePlus 11. All you get is that extra dock at the bottom and of course a split screen mode that you can use. In comparison on the Xiaomi Pad 5, MIUI was built ground up for the tablet and you could actually use the dock or you know invoke the dock from anywhere even if you're using another app. And that apart, even if you had split screen apps running, you could have an extra floating window on top of it. That's not possible on the OnePlus Pad. 
But since it's a tablet, there are certain apps that will split into two different screens. For example, in Gmail, you will have your list of uh, new emails on one side. And when you open them up, that will open up on the other side. And you can sort of scroll through your emails and read your email at the same time. But that's basic. That's supposed to be there. However, OnePlus does have an ecosystem play that it wants to talk about. One of which is very interesting. And that involves sharing your OnePlus phone's 5G signal with your tablet easily. This is not like a hotspot connection that it creates. It's something proprietary which OnePlus says that is far more stable, far more reliable, and of course, it also draws far less power. Again, we haven't tested it out, so I can't talk too much about it. Now to keep the pad running, you've got a 9510 mAh battery inside, which is very close to 10,000 mAh. But with Dimensity 9000, it does draw a lot of power. So I would suggest not using it in high performance mode and in balance mode, which is the default. So you can eke out more battery life out of it. You can expect about one and a half to two days of normal usage. But if you do game a lot or watch a lot of videos, for which OnePlus claims that 12.4 hours of continuous video playback is possible on the OnePlus pad. However, OnePlus does have one ace up its sleeve and that is 67 watt charging support for the OnePlus pad with a 100 watt charger inside the box, which is just crazy. And with this charger, you can charge the tablet from zero to 100 in 80 minutes. Now this is unheard of in the whole tablet world. So that definitely sets apart the OnePlus pad. So the asking price for the OnePlus pad is 37,000 for the 8 120 GB variant and 2000 rupees more for the 12 to 56 GB variant. And in this price range that is under 40,000, the only other two good alternatives that I can think of are the Xiaomi Pad 5 and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE. Now what works in OnePlus Pad's favor is clearly the extreme performance that you get with it and the fact that you can fast charge it with that 67 watt charger. On the flip side, the Xiaomi Pad 5, which again is one of the better Android tablets in the market that you can buy today, is priced really well for the Snapdragon 860 that you get with it and it's got tablet specific features that are very useful. Talking about the Xiaomi Pad 5, it is also available on YouTube's new product buying link. You should go check that out, maybe even purchase it from there and let me know how the whole shopping experience is like. And with the Tab S7 FE, Samsung has been making tablets forever, so their brand value is definitely better than other Android tablets in the market. And apart from that, with the S7 FE, you get the S Pen bundled inside the box. And if you can pay a little bit more, you can get the iPad 10th gen or the iPad mini as well, which are far better, far more refined, far more evolved tablets. So does OnePlus shake up the market with the OnePlus Pad? I would say not. But when you look at the OnePlus Pad in isolation, it's definitely a product worth considering and could become better in the future. All right, that's it about the OnePlus Pad. Do you guys like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.